Do we have a four-way title race on our hands for the first time in such a long time? We're going to look through each of the four contenders and why we think they could be contenders and also where this title race may end up going. Let's start with Chelsea. Enzo Maresca has impressed a lot of people. Both, both of you guys have just spoken about him on a separate video to Liverpool against Chelsea. I've been very impressed by him as well. He seems to be a manager who knows what he wants. And Chelsea look good. You're a massive fan, Kim. Like the amount of times I've heard you say, these guys are real. Yeah, these yeah. guys are here for good. Yeah, no, I think they've been absolutely exceptional this season. I think they've surprised everyone. I think we all expected Maresca to come in and struggle more than he has. I think he's really, really landed on his feet. We mentioned it in the other video, but he's been very clear with his 48-man squad, who's actually in his shortlisted team. He told Sterling he didn't want him. He's told various other players that they're not really part of his plans. And he's got a very good group of about 18 to 20 players who he clearly trusts. And they must have a separate sort of training facility with the amount of players they've got. <laughs> but I think he's done an exceptional job. And they've got Cole Palmer, haven't they? I think it's fair to say that Cole Palmer is the best player in the league. I think he has been over the last year and a half. The only other name you would probably put in there is Phil Foden. But he's obviously had a bit of a drop off at the beginning of this season with not playing. And I think with a player like that, anything is possible. The league is probably slightly out of reach. And the only reason that I would say it's slightly out of reach is that I think they, their squad is too young. I think they don't have any leaders and I think their defence is a little bit welterweight. I think that's going to be the only thing that will cause them harm. I think they'll beat lots of teams. I think they'll beat lots of the top six because they can attack incredibly well. They're very, very fast on the break. They've got players who are absolutely unbelievable on the ball and they've got a pretty good midfield duo when they're on form of Enzo and Caicedo who can break up play really, really well. So I think they'll cause a lot of teams problems. I just don't think they've got that little bit of like a mean centre-back or, you know, like a really wise and experienced player to take them right to the top of the league. The term I've written on my piece of paper here around Chelsea is just wet behind the ears. Like, that's, that's how I see this team. Lots of talent. Um, you can't doubt that they've, in and among all the chaos, brought in some really talented young players. But it's going to take time to get those guys up to speed. They're going to have to learn along the way. I still think the manager is, as much as I think he's doing a really, really good job right now, he's not as experienced as, as you know, your Jurgen Klopp's of the past or your Pep Guardiola's, who is ultimately the benchmark. Um, and I think he's going to have to learn fast. A bit like Mikel Arteta has, where he's sort of year upon year, there's been very clear improvements. Maresca, for all the good work he did at Leicester City, there was a point last season where Leicester fans were starting to question what was going on mm. and wondering if there was going to be a collapse. In the end, they got over the line. So I think there's learning to be done from him. And I think the players are just that little bit wet behind the ears to say title contenders. Let's take a quick look at Liverpool then. Um, best defence in the league currently. Uh, boast the lowest X, XGA in the league is 5.1. They've only conceded two this season. Alisson out until November, but you've got to look at that front line of Jota, Gakpo, Salah, uh, Darwin, and I'm definitely missing one in there, uh, Federico Chiesa. Um, so it's a six-man front line. What do you make of their chances in a four-way title race? I think they've definitely got a chance um, and I'm going to categorise them as such until I see something that tells me they're not. Um, been there, done it, haven't they? A lot of these players have been there, done it. They've got, for me, probably the best forward line of the lot. Like I think in terms of the outputs and the way they spread the goals around that group, I think that makes them as dangerous as anybody. Um, Arna Slot is a question mark because not because I don't think he's good. I just don't know enough about him mm. to understand um, You know what direction he wants to take the team in 100%. I can see what he's trying to do, but what's the destination? Don't don't know yet. I know what Klopp's destination was. I know what Pep Guardiola's is always going to be. I think I know what Mikel Arteta's is now, but I'm not sure on slot um, just yet. But the fact that they've been there, done it, got a mixture of experience, but also some really talented young players as well. I think until I see something that tells me otherwise, I have to put them in the race. Yeah, I mean, I said and got a little bit of stick for it towards the end of last season when Klopp said that he was going to leave. I thought it was the right time for him to leave. And I think when you look at their Premier League positions over the time that Klopp was there, you're talking eighth, fourth, fifth, and then a few seconds. I think what Arna Slot's done is, he, to me, it seems like anyway, and this might be completely untrue, it seems like they're more of a team than they were under Klopp. There was better vibes under Klopp, for sure. There was more passion. The players were probably playing more for the shirt than we've seen anyone play in the Premier League for the last decade or so. But... I look at slot and I see a complete team where everyone is working together. I think a lot of what Klopp relied on was individual brilliance in those very, very fast counter-attacks. Whereas I think that slot has a more solidified squad from goalkeeper to forward. And I've been very impressed with what he's done so far. I think 
one massive benefit is that there is no expectation for Liverpool to win the league. They bought no players. Slot, apart from Chiesa, they bought no one. Slot said he was happy with the squad he has. There's no expectation whatsoever. And he can just play with that complete freedom. And that might eventually be the turning point for them. All right, so we've got inexperienced, we've got very experienced, and we've got somewhere in the middle. Arsenal, who've sort I mean, you could argue been there and done that in terms of being in a title race. And um, Odegaard's been out for a while. You've dealt with that pretty well. A really difficult run of fixtures. Arsenal have got through that very well. Uh, in uh, Where we're at, at the moment, it does feel like they're going to be the ones to run it all the way. They're building year upon year. That's the most encouraging thing. I think you can say throughout the Arteta tenure is that there's been improvement every single time. And even when, um, you know, it looks like there might not be, if you scratch beneath the surface a little bit, you will find that there has been. That's what Arsenal fans have bought into. Um, you mentioned Odegaard's absence and Arsenal's ability to grind out results during that period, which I think has been really important. And if you go back to the season before last, Arsenal started like a house on fire and mm. burnt out at the end and ended up missing out. Last year, they started a little bit slower and they managed to maintain the pace at least until the end. I think they won 16 of their 18 league games in 2024, right? Um, at the back end of last season. So they did go the distance. It was points that they dropped in the first half that unfortunately were the problem. You look at Arsenal now and it's the same as what we saw last season, whereby the start has been a little bit slow in terms of the performances. But I think because we're more experienced now in terms of a title race and what it takes... As fans, we now look at that and go, actually, that's not us stuttering. That's encouraging that we're coming through those games and taking maximum points. So I think there's a real belief in this Arsenal team. The fans believe it. The manager clearly believes it. And um, City are still the benchmark and it's not going to be easy to topple them. I'm not saying that for a second. But Arsenal are the best equipped of the teams here, surely, to go the distance with Manchester City, who will undoubtedly be there for me. And you've got an extra dimension now. The, the, the defensive ability that you've got now and the style of play that Arteta is kind of playing this season, which has sort of come out of nowhere, this sort of slightly more pragmatic approach. I know you love v it. Very, yeah. very defensive. You know I don't like it, but fine. Very defensive. Scoring goals from set pieces. You've got this extra dimension now where you can turn it on when needs be against, say, your Leicesters and your Southamptons at home. And then in the bigger games, you can retreat, you can defend and you can score goals for set pieces. For sure, Arsenal are going to push City the closest. And then Man City, no Rodri. Uh, still don't know when he's back. Uh, rumour has it. And it's not rumour, actually. I've seen a video of him running in Valencia. I just don't know when it when that video happened. Um, Haaland already on 10 goals. Grealish looked in good form uh, for England. You have done this face so yeah. much this season. Anytime we talk about City, I see. The, I don't even know what this face is, but it's not a happy face. The thing is, we spoke about it on another video of we have this expectation of Manchester City and certain teams where you say, of course they're in the title race, it's Man City, it's Pep Guardiola, of course. And I've asked anyone, who do you think will win the league? And the phrase you always get back is, it's really hard to look past City. That is only based on the past and the name Pep Guardiola and the names in that team sheet. I have to say, if you've watched the performances this year, I don't think they've been title winning performances. Now, I know there's a lot of, you don't play well, but you still get the points, that's how you win the Premier League. Against Brentford, City were incredibly lucky. Against Fulham, City were incredibly lucky. Both those games without Rodri. And I think the way that we have looked in midfield has not been solid at all. I think if we were playing against someone who is a little bit more prolific in front of goal than Adama Traore, we'd have three less points. And I think if Brentford were a slightly higher team, say an Aston Villa and Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, City would have lost that game. So I think unless they sort out that midfield conundrum, which really needs sorting out because... We discussed it when Rodri was first injured and we said we don't know how they're going to cope without it. But having an aged Kovacic and an aged Gundogan playing as like a double pivot in midfield is clearly not the solution. There is the possibility, of course, that City can ride out this wave until the January transfer window and then by maybe zubamendi has been mentioned and other centre defensive mids have been mentioned and maybe they'll push on and we know how good we can be after that sort of January, February period. But I think watching the team now, watching the last few games... You wouldn't say, if you didn't know it was Manchester City and you didn't know it was Pep Guardiola and you were just watching them, you wouldn't say that's a champions elect side. I, I trust your opinion more than my own on Manchester City because it's the club that you follow. My phrase for them was the benchmark because that's what they are. Yeah. Um, they've set the standard so high over the years. Um, I mentioned Arsenal going on that incredible run in the second half of last season. And what did it amount to? Nothing. Mm. Being heartbroken on the final day. So, like, I, I get what you're saying, but I think... If you're a challenger and you're chasing them, you can't afford to 
to slip into that mindset of they're not what they were last season. You can't because the minute you switch off for a second, they will punish you and they are capable of putting those runs um, together that can kill Honestly, you. as a Liverpool fan, Liverpool have been in that situation a thousand times over. Um, just on a few things you just said there, you said City aren't quite at it. I actually agree. I don't think Arsenal are as good as they were last year, a little more pragmatic, whatever it may be. I don't think Liverpool are the side that they were in the club and I don't think Chelsea are this enormous outsider. I think the benchmark for the title might be coming down. And therefore, I actually do think we're going to have more than a two-way... I don't think we'll have a four-way title race. I think we'll have more than a two-way title race. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think I've not been particularly impressed with City. I've not been particularly impressed with Arsenal. And I've not been outstanding by Liverpool or Chelsea, really. I think if you look at the last game, I think Liverpool were lucky to beat Crystal Palace. City were very lucky to beat Fulham. And I think Arsenal against both Leicester and Southampton, that could have gone another way. So... There is that whole thing of they are winning, they're gaining points when they're not playing particularly well, but no one has been that impressive. I don't think that the tally for the Premier League this year will be anywhere near as high as it has been the last couple of years. I agree with that. I think that the the amount of points required is going to be less um, and that obviously does open it up and give other teams a, a sniff. I just I can, I can say that it's a three-horse race at the minute if I include Liverpool in that. Um, and as I said earlier, I will include them in that until I think otherwise, until I see something that tells me they're not. I can't put Chelsea in it, though. So I can concede that it's a three-horse race, but I can't go as far as saying it's a four-horse race. Do you think you just admitted that the points tally will be lower? Do you think that plays into Arsenal's hands? Yeah, because I think that if you look at recent history, Manchester City have proven that they can be almost perfect. And Arsenal have got less of that to show off. You know, I talked about that run at the end of, of last season, which was incredible. And I was sitting there, I remember being on a video somewhere and saying that we're going to need to win all of our games, maybe bar one, in that last 18. And we won 16 of them and still didn't win the league. Mm. And I genuinely meant that because I know the, the standards that Manchester City have set and, and the bar that they're capable of hitting every time. And yes, the points tally will be lesser. I agree with that. And the fact that there's more teams like Chelsea that can take points off people now when they probably couldn't last season, that helps in terms of making it more wide open and more of a race. But can, I can't put Chelsea in there yet because they've got so much to prove. Without yeah. adding an extra name to the list, we haven't really spoken about Aston Villa, who aren't having a particularly dissimilar season to Chelsea, particularly over the last year and the beginning of this season. They've obviously just beat Bayern Munich. Do you not think that I there's th a I potential think... chance in a season where I think we all expect the points tally to be lower... Could we not see a surprise this year where none of the big teams win? As much as I'd love to say yes, I think like if City are the benchmark and this season they're not, Arsenal are the benchmark. So I think anyone who's chasing either of them to, and if Arsenal are not, Liverpool are the benchmark, no respect to Aston Villa, they cannot achieve any of those three benchmarks. If the benchmark was Chelsea, Villa are in the title race. And that's where I think I draw the line of like, I think it's a three horse race. Chelsea might arrive in it at different points, but I, I cannot see this going further. This will get clipped up, no doubt. But the Unai Emery cycle, we're almost at that point where it starts to, to drop off a little bit. I'm convinced. And I think he's done a wonderful job so far, but it, there always comes a point with Unai Emery where there's too much to juggle. It's happened in every job before. And there will be a point where he chooses to prioritise Europe because that's what Unai Emery does. Mm -hmm. And that's where Villa, I'm not saying they're going to have a disastrous season, but that's why I can't put him in the title race. Yeah. I think they're top four contenders. They're very solid top four contenders. But to, for me to put them beyond that, I think is a bit of a stretch at this stage. I get what you're saying, but I've seen Unai Emery firsthand get to the crunch point in the season and go, Europe's that way, Premier League's that way, and I know where my heart takes mm -hmm. me, and it's always Europe with him. 